past weekend was a who's who of 2024 talent up in South Bend, Indiana. A lot of top prospects there in attendance plan for Marcus Freeman. Hope to play for him in the future, led by quarterback C.J. Carr. More on him in a bit, but I have to say that the biggest name there was not necessarily a player. It was our friend Tom Loy of Irish Illustrated, so let's welcome him in. And Tom, before we look ahead, let's talk about the here and now. Remind the people of the 2023 class that Marcus Freeman has put together. It was once a top three group, of course, but it's looking like they'll finish around eighth in the rankings after losing a few commits, unfortunately, most notably Keon Keeley. So what is your overall impression of this year's group? Yeah, I mean, obviously, everybody wants to talk about the tough blow with, with losing Keon Keeley and Peyton Bowen, but, like, let's take a look at what they, they landed. They landed some some big-time prospects. Charles Jagasaw is a guy that we at 24-7 Sports like a great deal. Um, he's right on the cusp of a fifth star nationally. Um, Jeremiah Love, I know Andrew Ivan got a chance to see him in Florida at the Under Armour game, and uh, he looked to impress down there. And, and you know, he's a guy that's going to play running back at Notre Dame. And I know Dylan McCullough, Tommy Reese, and those guys love that kid. Um, Drake Bowen, I think he had a, a, a strong week in San Antonio at the All-American Bowl. He's a four-star linebacker at Indiana. Um, a guy I'm really excited about is Kenny Minchie. Uh, I think uh, he had a, a strong high school career. It was a really nice flip after losing, um, you know, silent commit, whatever you want to call it, from Dante Moore. But being able to get Minchie, flip him from Pittsburgh, what, was a big win for Tommy Reese. And, and maybe my dark horse for this entire class is Jaden Greathouse, who had an exceptional high school career. Um, he's a tremendous wide receiver that I think is going to have a really, really good college career. And I know Chancey Stuckey cannot wait to get his hands on him and, and see what he can do early at Notre Dame. Tom, I know you uh, put in a few crystal ball picks. We're going to get into those here uh, in a few minutes. But junior day at Notre Dame, I looked at the weather there in South Bend, former South Bend resident. I lived there for two winters. I think there was some snow, right? It was pretty cold. So what did they do up there? Because I don't think they were walking around outside. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a cold day, um, but you know, luckily a lot of some of the, a lot of the guys there were from the Midwest, so they were pretty used to it. And and I do like the mentality. They're like, you know, if I'm going to play in the NFL, I'm going to play in all these cold weather stadiums. I'm going to have to go to, you know, Minnesota or Buffalo, or whatever the case may be. So they got the right mindset in terms of picking Notre Dame and not passing just because of the weather. But no, they they actually went to the hockey game at night, so that was pretty cool. But a lot of it was just you know the ins and outs of Notre Dame, what it can do for you on and off the field. You know, the four for 40 pitch, that has not changed um, since I've been covering Notre Dame for the last 10 years. And it's, it's not something that's going to change anytime soon under Marcus Freeman. So a uh, busy day. Uh, it was a lot of, it was a pretty cool photo shoot. They broke, broke out the gold bars again. And um, it was a pretty unique setup this time. I really liked what they did in that sense. But it was all about bringing these guys close together. Um, they didn't have a ton of guys there. So it was really like 10 to 12 guys outside of the commit. So they really wanted to get these guys building a brotherhood, if you will. So uh, it's pretty neat. I thought they did a really good job. A lot of beautiful buildings on that campus, too, so they can hang out indoors if they need to. Uh, let's talk about one of the headliners this weekend. Of course, C.J. Carr, quarterback, has been committed to the Irish since June, so he's been locked in early in this recruitment. Tom, how does his presence, though, help Marcus Freeman's efforts to recruit the rest of this class? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if he could be at Notre Dame right now, he would be signed, <laughs> sealed, and delivered. I mean, this kid loves Notre Dame. He loves Marcus Freeman, Tommy Reese. Um, this kid bleeds blue and gold, which is kind of funny because we all know who his grandfather is, uh, Lloyd Carr from Michigan. So pretty neat how it all played out. He's he's fired up to build this class. He's taking a lot of pride, um, not just in the offensive side of the ball, but on the defensive side of the, as well. And uh, he's just, you know, he he's the guy building this group, and, and he knows that the coaches can't do it a ton publicly. Um, they can kind of throw their little subtweets here and there, but the most part, he's the one kind of leading the charge publicly and he's uh, pushing pushing hard for all these guys. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice if he could get a little help on the defensive side of the ball with another big name, maybe a five-star kid we might talk about. Uh, that would be a massive pickup that would actually help him on the defense side of the ball. Tom, the biggest crystal ball for you coming out of the weekend, Justin Scott, our number eight ranked uh, interior defensive lineman. You pop on the tape. I think this is a guy that Notre Dame hasn't had in a while. Two-way player in the middle, three, four-eye uh, technique. He can create some juice. I think you, you, when we were texting, you said Christian Wilkins is the comp. I think maybe Jerry Tillery. I remember he played some offense coming out of high school. Uh, what, what's the latest on him, and, and why have you logged that forecast for the uh, Irish? Yeah, shout out to Irish Illustrated's Tim Priester for that comp. I, I mean, I, I think it's a great one. I actually see some Tillery as well. 
what I like most about Scott is his 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 violence, his toughness in the middle. Um, we haven't seen a guy like that since Lewis Nix, uh, kind of man in that front seven. So uh, you need somebody like that in the middle to uh, uh, clog the run, to be able to get to the quarterback. I asked somebody at Notre Dame, like, what do you see here in Justin Scott? If if you know, kind of what if you can land somebody like that? And and the person said, of course, he's the next Bryant Young. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, they need to get that one done. I did crystal ball him. I do feel like Notre Dame is the leader, uh, like them slightly ahead of Michigan right now. I know Georgia just entered the race, and hey, all bets are off at that point. But I, I know he's got a potential commitment lined up for July 31st, I believe. So we'll see if that comes to fruition and he makes his decision at that time. But either way, as of today, I do like Notre Dame's chances. I think Al Washington, Al Golden, they've done a tremendous job. I think distance is a factor and I think that playing near his family, he's a Chicago kid. There's an opportunity, you know, they're calling it like the hometown hero, essentially. And uh, Notre Dame, CJ Carr, the rest, of the, the rest of the commits, all over this guy. They have been relentless in recruiting Justin Scott. So he's feeling the love from Notre Dame. Now it's just up to him to pull the trigger. All right, we're going to roll through a few more crystal balls. But real quick, Tom, how many did you put in this weekend? I believe I hit eight. Eight for, eight. The, for just yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, you've been busy. Marcus Freeman's been busy. Let's roll through a few more of these here, though. Again, it's very early in the process. So the crystal ball you put in for four-star receiver Bronte Johnson doesn't mean that he won't keep taking visits. I still think he's got plans for that. But after the weekend, what has you leaning Notre Dame for him? Yeah, so Bronte is right in my backyard in Fort Wayne, and, and he's a kid I've been able to get to know pretty well and a uh, tremendous athlete. I mean, this is a kid that was for sure a surefire bet for to play wide receiver at the next level, but when I went and watched him play uh, as a junior and uh, play, watch him play safety, I just I saw a next level kid that really good receiver, but I think he has a chance to be an elite safety. Um, and, and that's where I kind of see him fitting. At, if he picks Notre Dame, that's where I kind of see him fitting. But he's a tremendous wide receiver. I know Chancey Stuckey wouldn't mind having him in his room, so we'll see what happens there. But I just think that getting his mom on campus this weekend, um, I think, again, like Scott, distance from home is a factor. Um, I'm not ready to count out a couple others. I know Indiana and Purdue are involved. He's going to get up to Tennessee at the end of the month for their junior day. I know you just had Ryan Callahan on, so keep an eye on the volunteers. But right now, I definitely think Notre Dame has set the bar. And, and again, it's going to be up to Marcus Freeman and those guys to close the deal. Tom, let's finish up with Peyton Pierce, a kid out of the Lone Star State. Tech, uh, Notre Dame signed four from Texas last cycle. Coming into this visit, Pierce, all Oklahoma uh, on the crystal ball. But uh, as he exits and heads back home, you logged one for Notre Dame. What are you hearing there? And more importantly, is this another uh, Peyton Bowen type of situation? I never anticipated these Notre Dame-Oklahoma battles, but here we are. Yeah, we got another Peyton from Texas, a big time player that's looking at Notre Dame and Oklahoma. So we'll see what happens. But no, I absolutely like Notre Dame right now for for Peyton Pierce, uh, 6'1", 225 pound plus linebacker that Al Golden, James Laurinaitis, Marcus Freeman badly want to land at Notre Dame. They are pushing really hard. I know Oklahoma's in it. He's going to visit there, I think, next weekend. And then he's got Texas, Texas A&M. He's already talking about returning to Notre Dame for a spring practice potentially a spring game. Um, like I said, I know that there's a lot of smoke about the Sooners in Oklahoma. I believe both of his parents went there. I get it. Like, no question. I get it. They are, there's a lot driving him to the Sooners, but all you can do in this business is trust your sources, trust your conversations with the young man, uh, not to quote Steve Wolfong there, but um, you got to just, you know, go with the flow and, and write out what your best sources are saying. And, and my best sources on this have Notre Dame as the favorite at this point, which is why I put the crystal ball pick in and, and why I feel good about Notre Dame's chances. I think it's safe to say that the best sources are probably your best sources. So, Tom, thank you so, so much for all your great insight. Be sure to check out all of his work at irishillustrated.com.